that's a good analogy. That's it. Yeah, because it's it's a lot for it's like we said earlier with with Hojo, the economy is not that great right now, and you're gonna you know, no, all not. these is these campaigns in the one, you know, and so close that you're you're having to make people decide who would price they rather. Points are, yeah, price points are another thing people need to take a look at because, like, the embrace too. It's twenty dollars. It is a when when you get from cover to cover, it's probably going to be sixty four pages. There are fifty six pages of story in here alone, in just the embrace too, right? And so when you look at that, you get cover B plus digital, right? Or like whatever cover plus the digital file. So if you break that down, that's effectively fifteen dollars for the book, five dollars for the PDF, right? So that way you have a digital copy to read. And then you have the book. The first book is $15 uh, is, well, I think we actually have it as $20 because five of that goes to the Virginia uh, Victims uh, Assistance Network. But like, um, you know, what, what you end up having, what you end up having is again, like $5 for the, 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 the PDF, $15 for the book, you know, like it, right. that's that's what it that's what it should be, is it should be v- as cheap as we can possibly make it. Yeah, and everybody is willing to spend the extra little bit of money, right? Everybody is willing to do that because, as indie guys, we aren't a big corporation. We do not have annual budgets that we have approved and we're not at this point where we're just able to invest 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 we're doing everything effectively one project at a time and these projects are effectively grassroots and the entire hope is to pretend uh, hopefully you know reach the black and if we can get some green it gets invested into the next book right so people are willing to to spend a little bit more but we are in hard times and comics mm-hmm. are supposed to be affordable. So charging $25 for effectively a floppy, I mean, yeah, like there are people who are going to buy it because they're your fans, but that feels a little bit predatory. Like, why aren't you doing $15? Everybody here, anybody who knows anything knows that it costs maybe $5 to print a perfect bound book at the digital printer of 48 pages plus, right? Right. Yeah, like it like so at the end of the day you need a you in order to fund your project you need a what if it's five dollars to print you need a 500 percent profit margin mm-hmm. to make up your losses come on man like a mm-hmm. like you don't need that much you need to like it like and it's more important to have more backers anyway yes like I'd rather I'd rather have a thousand people back at fifteen dollars than a hundred people back at twenty five. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, BA says here it depends on the cost of your artist, the quality and page rate of the artists mm-hmm. are reflected in the book price. Um, I mean, I, I I get what you're saying, but at the end of the day, we're grassroots and we're pretty, like a. The, our business model is effectively nonprofit, right? We rely predominantly on uh, donations and 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 grants. We put that in massive prote- uh, massive yeah. asterisks, right? Yeah. So you have to go into this with the assumption that at best you're going to be breaking even, right? Mm-hmm. And so right. like uh, you have like that's how you have to treat it. Um, and uh, like at the end of the day, like Elysian Fields, my next book. The overhead on that book is probably the largest one that I, I'm going to end up having. I, I've I have gone out and I've made sure that you know we have top tier talent on that book. It's going to be insane. Not to say that any of my previous books haven't had it, but like I have like it, this is a reboot of my original series. I'm going to make sure that it is the best it can possibly be to be worth it. But it's like we will be only charging fifteen dollars for a forty four page book. And yeah, it's eight and a half by 11. It's in a prestige format and everything like that. But like $15 gets you the book and the digital. Yeah. Jimmy Ray says, Mr. Onan, oh, oh bro, it's not just $5. Come 
cost of production and shipping Dude, overhead shipping. and the more you it, sell shipping. the higher shipping is something that can absolutely be mitigated again you have shipping costs built into these things as separate parts of the tier printing the books and your uh and them shipping it to you or shipping it to a fulfillment center is not going to kill you it's going to maybe increase that cost by maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars it's five dollars for a book that is perfect bound at 48 pages or higher and that's if you get like an extremely premium cover uh uh stock on there but if you're going digital print runs and doing at like at what whatever you need and then a little bit extra for a convention or what have you your overhead shouldn't be that insane for printing like a, and then if you're doing uh if you're doing like like a, uh I'm blanking on what it's called uh not it's it's the other thing other than digital uh offset if you're doing offset print offset, jobs yeah, that are from overseas dude kin printings uh like a like got you can do whatever quantities that you want but like they're they're printing and i think for 700 books of like uh of like a 20 or third 30 page books like five hundred dollars yeah you pay an additional 300 for shipping because it's from china but that's yeah. still under a thousand dollars yeah that's what like i a, use like, that's what i use like a, like a, like that's the there the excuses that are going out there are just insane to me um like at, at the end of the day it's about being smarter and just looking for more options if you have a printer that is giving you a higher uh, uh that is getting giving you an over uh, like a, an overpriced quote on your print work, go find another printer. This is a free market. Yep. Yeah. There is yep. always somebody willing to give a better deal. Mm hmm. Yep. Just gotta look around. Um, I went up here because uh, I told y'all say because they asked me Saturday night, and I don't think I gave a very good straightforward question. <laughs> or, or answer to the question. Excuse me. Uh, Yak said so. I backed the embrace last night. The catch-up tier, I asked last night if that was both books because the description was confusing. Katie said you'd be on today to ask for clarification. Yeah, there it, you go. It does. That, that includes both books. So that's a, a, as a catch-up tier, that's book one and book two. Okay, so I was right. And I, okay, good. <laughs> I, I saw MPC Oasis say nobody should be printing in China. The The fact of the matter is, is most offset printers are are in the Asia area. Like whether it's China, India, there's a whole bunch of them, but like that's where off the majority of the offset printers are. I think I know of one domestic offset printer, and they're very difficult to get in touch with. Oh yeah, I can only imagine. And and, um... and as as I said, I generally because my books have like you know we have less than two hundred backers right now on the Embrace Two. I generally don't do offset, like. A, I generally use local guys that do digital print runs and offer good deals on that. The guy that I have for for that, that I use predominantly, you know, he does a fantastic job. And I think it's like the like a like for a floppy like a of like 24, 25 pages, it's a little over two dollars per book. Mm -hmm. For a for a heavier book and what have you, you're getting to like three or four dollars. Like, there are ways to do this and be smarter about it. It's just people are just relying on specific things. I mean, like, it, like that that is what it is. But I, I think that we need to focus on if we want things to succeed and continue to succeed and grow, prices need to be more accessible. So charging $25 for a floppy is not a way to keep business. No. Because at the end of the day, for twenty five dollars, people can get two man uh, manga taco bonds with over three hundred sixty pages worth of content. For twenty five dollars, people can get you know two image comic trade paperbacks. For twenty five dollars, like a, like you have to look at it like this. Yeah, so can. yes, people are willing to pay a larger price for a more boutique item that is indie because we are trying to grassroot and everything like that but keep in mind that people are going to expect then expect that you put this as your shelf price and if you don't put it as your shelf price 
they're going to ask you why it's not because they paid 25. Right. And um. that's, that's, that's where it's like, you've like, a, like there has to be, um, uh, yeah, there's so much cost that goes into producing a comic, five dollars. Yeah, I I understand. It is a lot of expensive. This there's a reason why this is very difficult to do from the ground up. But For if you're sure. going to do it from the ground up, you need to do it right, and you need to do it in a way that respects your backers. I'm not saying go and sell your book for five dollars. I am saying you should not be charging twenty five dollars for a floppy. Like a like like that's 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 not okay. Um, let's see. Carrie's Crazy Cat says manga is black and white and published on newspaper, uh, newsprint paper. People understand the difference. Curious to see how Shane and John did this week. And yeah, we'll, we'll get mean, back around that at the end of the show. Uh, but BA says here 25 isn't unfair. We aren't the mainstream. Our print runs are tiny. Also, many of us are not outsourcing the art to lower cost countries. I, I mean, that's that's I don't think that that's particularly true. There are plenty of artists that I have worked with that are from the Philippines, Brazil, all over the place, because that is a way that you can cut your overhead and still get incredibly professional work. Quality, and if you aren't man. doing that, you aren't necessarily going about this the right way. Uh, the artist for Elysian Fields Reborn, William Moore Reyes, is from the Philippines, $100 a page for his pencils. And let me tell you, that's like a, that dude is a top tier. Like the fact that this guy hasn't been picked up by Marvel or DC or anything like that it has blown me away because his work is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, like a, like, you know, uh, Dean James from the embrace Australia, you know, like, a, like, uh, Kari Salviejo. When I used her for SPQR, she was $80 a page. Her top, her prices have gone up considerably since then because she's got taken on a lot of work, but even still $120 a page, I think is what her current rate is. And, she's fantastic and she's fast like it you should absolutely be using these things because they are they are tools to make sure that you're doing things in a way where you can get your projects done at a lower cost and make and still make sure that it's quality right yeah like and newsprint's great mm -hmm. yeah I, but like at the end of the day ba turns if you're paying 300 plus per page you can't charge 15 unless you have thousands of backers Look, man, that's the whole that's the whole part is you aren't the only one that should be out there promoting your book. You have an art team. And at that point, you look at it, look at your followers and then go look at like I know that you had Corey Barton uh, doing your art from uh, for Vigilante's Creed. Right. This isn't just your bat. These aren't just your followers. These are Corey's followers. Yeah. They are the how to draw comics community because Corey is Clayton's brother. Yeah. Like, like use your promotional resources. This is why you invest in these people is you have a collection. You aren't just you. You are your creative team. If your creative team isn't going out there and promoting the same way that you are, why are you like a, at the end of the day, that's that should effectively be a part of the contract, right? Hey, you're going to go out there and promote this stuff. They have a vested interest in it. The more that you make, the more work that they get later on. And, oh, sorry, got myself muted. Um, and I will say, I'll, I'll, I'll let, I don't know if you saw Jimmy's, but he says, Odin, does this part time as a hobby? Many of us were canceled from the mainstream. And do this as a career. We I, need to feed our families. I under I understand, but at the end of the day, there are plenty of us who are trying to make this a full on career. Yeah. And so, if you treat it as a part time hobby, that's fine. But like, you know, a lot of us who are who are scraping from the bottom to get up and push over, that's right. are trying to make the. And at the end of the day. $25 a book for a floppy isn't the way to do it because it's not commercial. It's not viable. Yeah, I can't do I could There's no way I could do that, man. Like, with what like, I a, got. like, like it, you know, I will like, a, like, it, this is where, you know, going to conventions is important. This is where going and doing all these things are important because it, you need, you need to be able to expand beyond 
just the bubble of the internet in order to grow. And if you're looking at this solely as, oh, I'm doing this as a part-time hobby, that's fine. Yeah. But then expect for it to just remain the same. Yeah. I mean, as far as like you're talking about with the, the artists and your art team, like my anchor, like, dude, he's he had the whole kerfuffle with uh, Brazil not being able to do anything on Twitter, but he's back and, now. He's out there promoting our book all the time. Frog, Frog Tony's asking why why I'm upset. I'm not upset. I am st simply stating that twenty five dollars for a floppy is not a sustainable business model. It's not. It isn't. Full stop. Like uh, like like that's that's literally all all it all it is. Like yes, there are people who are willing to pay for that, but you are never going to grow beyond that base. And I would rather have, as I said earlier, I would rather have a thousand people back me at 15 or 10 than a hundred people back me at 25. Yeah, he's he's not upset, Tony. Uh, he's he's not. He's not. I mean, um, it's not sustainable for anyone. Rob. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're actively seeing a downward trend in people backing these books because they are overpriced. Right. Like you, like you actively see it across the board. We are in an econ we are in a very bad period economically right now. Yeah. The doll like a, any dollar that can be saved to get groceries, get gas, do this, do that, is a is a dollar that people are going to save. And it, the discussion of like a and I'm not even saying hey we need to go match book like a dollar for dollar with what the mainstream is doing where it's like six dollars for a book because we can't do that like if we wouldn't even be able to cover cost and this is where again people are willing to give indie a fair shake on enhanced cost prices because of that but there does come to be a line where it's like if you have under 30 pages like if you have 30 pages or below on your book you shouldn't be charging 25 dollars I mean, yes, you can get backers at that price. You are not going to grow. I think the the point is is that you like you guys are talking about like individualistic things. I am saying if you go to a convention and you say my book is twenty five dollars and it's this and B A, you're also on a bit of a different thing because you have a novel that has illustrations. Right. I know that you're trying to turn it into a graphic novel as well, but you will have that money that you've made on the novel, which you have saved tons of money by not having to pay for near as much art. You will be able to take that and invest it into your graphic novelization. Exactly. I'd back way more books if they were 10 to $15. I'd buy two, one reader, one collectibles at that price point. Like, a, like there, there you go. Well, settle down, man. My book is 10 bucks. Exactly. <laughs> Papa Squad, hit the link. Like, did not did not mean to like <laughs> overtake this as like a crash course. In no, 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 no. I'm fine. Oh, we're good. We're good, y'all. This isn't. This is a good. This is a good debate. This is a good conversation to have. Like this is no mix this of is, comics. No, I. I mean, I am not offended, darling. This is uh, and and B B A is a good debater too. I don't mind debates I, as long as they're they're good and you're fine. So. And, uh, you know, it's important because people Jim, might not know this Jimmy, when they're listening. Jimmy, I did not contradict my argument. I said $25 is egregious for a floppy. I am saying that you should be charging like 15 which is more expensive than what the, what the uh, you know, mainstream is doing. But like, it's also more accessible. I would rather have people back, again, a thousand people back at 15 than a hundred people back at twenty five, or a hundred people back at fifteen, than than fifty at twenty five, because at the end of the day, that's where we're going. Like it, like fit, and these are this is not including any of your shipping. This is your your base price for the book, because shipping, like we're I'm at a point where I'm able to pretty easily manage like eight dollars for shipping in the domestic United States, right? Um, like that's, that's pretty manageable on like, at least for like, you know, a single book, but like that only goes up the more books you have. 
Like, uh, like, and that's the whole thing is that's what your shipping prices are for. This is just going for a, like, this is what I'm saying is if your thing says $25 to back this book and it is like under 40 pages, you shouldn't be charging $25. That's a floppy. Like, yes, it's 36 pages of pure story. You should be doing like $15. That's, that's all I am saying is at the end of the day, $25 is almost a full tank of gas. And you've got to look at it like that. Like, uh, you know, right now my, my tank fills up, I think for 35 sounds about right. Like, is that going to be worth it to the customer? And at the end of the day, this is a consumer driven thing, crowdfunding. It is, we are at a grassroots level. And it, Again, if all you're doing is doing this as your part-time hobby and, and what have you, and you're not looking to expand, it's fine. But there are a lot of us who are looking to expand and are looking to grow and are trying to push for greater heights. And you're not going to do that at $25 a book for a floppy. You're just not. There's better deals out there. And that's yeah, just how it is. Yeah, I can't do that, man. <laughs> Uh, Crazy Cat says here, crowdfunded can be the boutique first run. Uh, you can always do cheaper reprints or lesser quality paper and printing process. I mean, um, and yes, but at the end of the day, like it, that's not that's not going to. You're talking about pennies on the dime at that point, right? Like if you were if you were to go and try and print out like a a second print run with the cheaper quality stuff it's it's going to save you a little bit but like not as much if you as if you went and you just did a massive print run up front or what have you took it out to conventions and sold all of them and then used your profits to do your second print run and invest into the next project like it like there's 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 a lot of things that that can be done here it's just Price points are one of these things where I think that people need to start looking at, well, what can I do to lower mine? Because yeah. it is a conversation that needs to be had. It is. I've been having it beside, behind the scenes with quite a few people in that for one. Um, it, it's uh, like we saw this. A lot of people saw this coming. A lot of people denied it was coming. Frog Tony is trying to do the backer thing. Look, man, I've been shadow banned since day one. You want to do yeah, the 266 Tony. backers on the Embrace 1 to 144 backers? I had a, what, 20, what's that? That's a, uh, and, and I will say, Tony, he he has been shadow banned real bad. Um, and you also got to look at length and duration earlier. of campaigns, that's, too. That's, that's, not, that's not even a 2% decrease from the, book, the first book to the second book. Now, now, like, oh, and I apologize. I did the math backwards. Hold on one second. You're good. Divided You're good. by 260. See, that's why my wife is the math expert. I right. do this stuff. <laughs> You're a smart man right there. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, it's, it's about, like a, it's, I think it's around like a 30, 40% decrease. Now, generally speaking, a, Issue one, like if you were to look at mainstream numbers and what have you, a successful issue one is always going to do better than any other book in the run outside of its final issue because of sheer collector value, right? So you generally expect a 30% fall off between books. Mm. And didn't... we're right about there. Like we are in no way underperforming. We had a first book that did very well. The first book was very well received. You can go on and head and look for a bad review of the embrace. You won't really find one. Like a uh, Zever comic says, why not include more perks to keep the price point? Uh, uh, three Zever. years between an issue one and issue two had everything to do with what was going on in my life. Mm. Like a, we were going to do this crowdfunder. I think we had Rini's cover paid for back in 2022. Yeah, I remember. And we were going to launch in early 2023. Mm -hmm. And then I lost my job. 
So you can sit here and try and nitpick my excuses because you don't like what I am saying, which is what's going on. Or I, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Like, go ahead. Uh, or or you can take this at face value of this is not me saying trying to be a mean dude here. This is me saying that if you want this to grow, twenty five dollars for a book is not manageable. When people could go literally anywhere else in a convention hall, find a book for the exact same price, potentially even the same quality with longer page runs. Because I've been working at this for five years and I'm paying attention, Frog. Like, dude, okay, I'm going to stop reading Frog Tony's comments. But any, anyway. Stop reading the chat. Stop reading the chat. <laughs> no, that's a... Uh... That's fine. Like, don't don't worry about it. Uh, let's see. Um, Broken Entertainment, Cyberfrog Two had a lot to offer at twenty five, but but most it, don't. Uh, like it, and it, and this isn't the, like B A Turner saying like let everyone run their businesses the way they prefer, but don't take jabs at others and call them overpriced just to try and pick up more backers yourself. That's not what I'm doing here. Well, All I am saying is is that the current model isn't sustainable, and I say that, and I I say. What I am saying, because at the end of the day, if you want indie comics to succeed, it needs to be able to grow. And you are not going to grow at twenty five dollars per book. You're just not. Yeah. And I and think this is more of a like a uh, like a the people at this level. We're not talking about like huge people who make six figures. This isn't we're not lecture. I'm, I don't think I don't see him as lecturing anyone like that or. Uh, but I just think we're talking about economics, like twenty five dollars he's talking from a customer perspective. He's not taking jabs. This is just what I see because I think it's going off the rails with the chat here. I'm just trying to step yeah. in and moderate because I don't want to hear any shit. Right. I will say this. There was one comment that, um, like and as far as like time between campaigns, it's between the creator and the backers. They want to come back. They do they want. Creative team. Like what happens if you have a guy that's booked out for two, for a year and a half? Yeah, I either had to wait on my book to come back with issue three or pivot and get a new artist. I chose to go do a new artist because it's a hot ass book because between issue one and issue two, I did increase backers and funding because I hustled my ass off. And issue three is great. And it's not doing so well. Great because some somebody in a, in a back room tried to say something because she's looking at that person was looking at three weeks versus what at the end of the year so i'm not trying to hear it on that area but like if something happens between campaigns with the creator and the art team we handle that they'll handle that with the backers man it's the, at the end of the day he said it's customers it's backers that deal with this shit they're the ones who speak we can run our mouths all we want but it's the backers that speak if you want to run a 25 dollar floppy that's got like uh i don't know 28 pages like i got if you want it for 20 that Fuck around and find out. See what happens down this economy. I don't care what your YouTube is. <laughs> oh, goodness. Back to it. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, there is one uh, question that I that I thought was interesting. If we, we, we can... Uh, Zebra Comics says a while ago, so does the Sun Spirit is attached to the physical costume, or is he, it just he, there with his he dad's is, guidance? He is effectively in. He is in control of it to an extent. Like they are, they okay. are both. They both have a level of autonomy over what they can do in the suit. Like the, you know, David can do thing. Like David can take control and and do stuff with the suit. It's it's very similar to kind of the dynamic between. Uh, Spider Man and, and his symbiote, I would say, in terms of like how it works. Thank you. Uh, Galaxy Stranger, good morning. It's good to see you. Um, let's see here. Stimuli says Hojo is just being honest, in my opinion. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, and, and Turner's right. What you charge between on your book is between you and the backers. 100%. I'm just saying that you're going to have That's a harder time trying to grow. You are, and there's nothing like a, like that's just how it is. That's why you're seeing people charge less for books now. It's what it is. 
when I when I did Judex a year ago with uh with like a I I uh I wrote the first draft of Judex. Neff and I worked on the story and everything like that, and then they produced the book. We brought in I think it was twelve k, a little over, and like we had a tier that was straight up just you get the book and nothing else, and it was ten dollars and it sold pretty well. Our main tier was like 20 bucks and it got you the book, a coin and a few other things like, uh, and, and like all the stretch goals and what have you. And that did very well as well. Like at the end of the day, prices are a thing that will affect how many people come on and back. Right. It just, it, it is what it is. Yep. Um, Broken Entertainment says uh, it's a hard balance to make a profit and also grow your base. I think $25 is putting a lot of people out of it, especially people that might be looking at backing for the first time. Yeah. I definitely like understand that. Different strokes for different <laughs> strokes. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy. Oasis crowdfunding, a comic quality comic over 40 pages is expensive. $25 is how it is. But I agree the goal to lower the cost is a goal, but it will have to be on some other platform. I mean, I'd, I'd say that if you utilize all the platforms that you have, you should be able to make it work. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be using Indiegogo at this point. I've had, I have my reasons for it, but I was happy doing that and I've brought in as I said, I, like with all the campaigns that I have been a part of and everything that I have run the campaigns, Indiegogo brought in over 50K. Like, and that's mm -hmm. not a small amount. Well, and I think too, you you are going to be moving this over um, here soon to on my comment. Yeah. And I and I will say, I, I have a feeling you're going to do really well, especially since you're not shadow banned on Indiegogo and like, especially through Google search, thanks to several people in the chat for looking uh it's very it's almost impossible to find your campaign so yep. i have a feeling yeah. that once you get to fund my comic um and get the link out oh there, okay jimmy so ray much... is clarified i meant direct market or other and that is that is the yeah, other big right. challenge is you obviously in order to get like direct market distribution they want to see volume of titles yeah and yeah. and a collection of work so that way there is a in uh, there is insurance that they, you will be able to put out multiple books like a year because otherwise it's not worth it for them. And there is there there that is actively a thing. Yeah. Well, and you also on here in the campaign, uh, you have the the glow in the dark um, cover, and which Correct. is uh, which you have a limit of. So there's yes. there's a value so, in it. Yes. You're. You know, so, the cost and, the, and all, the way that that but there's value that, in the the second market, correct? Because there's only a limited correct. amount of, of these covers correct. that are left, right? So correct. you're kind of also and helping your backers in a sense of, you know, you, you know, this, I'm going to, you're going to get benefit from this, not only because it's beautiful and whatnot, but, you know, it's it's limited. So, and and it's, I, I heard you say on the clip that I made too, um, when I was first listening to you, uh, you said that, you know, black and white, I'm not black and white, excuse me, glow in the dark covers are actually pretty expensive to make, you know? Yeah. And so that's why there's just such a limited kind of run to it. But um, you're welcome to answer anybody yeah. in the chat well, and, if you need to. I, I could tell I'm, you. I'm not going to bother to like, a, like, a, like, a, I, like, a, and I appreciate, and one of the things that I will say is, is that it's, it's nice to see, I think that the the real fun thing about this is is that while you know Jimmy BA and everyone here have yeah you know, like we we have difference of opinion the one thing that I will appreciate is there's no devil uh, devolving to name calling or anything like that it's no. we have a disagreement we have dis yeah. differing points of view but like I know that BA isn't going to go and be like you know oh I'm going to start attacking this guy as a person like B and I, B A and I have been on a couple of streams together. We were doing, he was doing Vigilante's Creed at the same time that I was out there promoting Judex, and you know, like not a bad guy. You know, J Jimmy Reyes was, you know, a big supporter of me when I was first starting out. Uh, when I was doing Elysian Fields, he had me on a whole bunch of his shows. He's actually done a drawing of the Embrace before. One of uh, one of the shows that we did 
back when we were doing the Embrace One, he was just drawing the character on a live stream and it looked great. Um, like really good dude. Um, but like it, at, at the end of the day, this is this is what you know it is. That like you know, we are we are at the end of the day, you guys are selling picture books that are a luxury luxury time wasting item. It's not like you are selling a useful item or tool that can be used every day. It's a picture book. I mean, I yes, that is not um it's it is a luxury item it is it is a extra thing and i think that if we are going to do that we need to make it as affordable as possible which means bringing as much value per page as we can and like i do see where jimmy is saying where like the big thing that's going to determine us greatly reducing prices is you know doing uh, is getting distribution deals, but I do think that there are other ways that we can be more creative in how we invest in things and where how we price point our books. I mean, he says Mike, it's I mean, not just a picture book; it's what I mean, an insulting. It's, yeah, I, I don't, I don't like it. Like from an objective standpoint, that is what a comic is, and the the reason why comics became the big medium that they are was they were generally cheaper forms of entertainment than just your standard book. You could go out and get like, you know, back when a lot of people were growing up, comics were anywhere between a dollar to $3 per book. Mm -hmm. So like you could go out to a store with $20 and come back with five where you, you could go to a bookstore with $20 and not even get one, you know, like, a, like, like, like that's, that I, I I mean Frog Tony, I think that marketing is a massive point, but I think that if you have a better price point and you have good marketing, you do very well. Yeah, and you know it's spot. When you when you look at a lot of the you know six figure campaigns and up, they aren't really putting out floppies, they're putting out trade papers. So like a twenty-five dollar price point for a like eighty plus page book. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking specifically if you have sub 40 pages, like th between like, a, I would say anywhere between 25 and like 36 and you have a $25 price point. I don't feel like you are being fair to your backers. I think that there is an element of that where I, everyone understands that we're all trying to make back our overhead but mm -hmm. like yeah is excessive i mean you baltimore comic-con was this weekend you've been there right mike yeah okay. i was uh, we were there this weekend yes so walking around do you think if anybody would have had like like say my first book was 13 bucks like crowdfunded right what would happen I mean, if somebody would have picked up the floppy and like and like this is 12 bucks they'd have been like what no and that's it. As soon as they heard that, it would have been like, no, because there's so much, so much other stuff around. Just yeah, do like it. a, like a, at the end of the day, there were a lot of, there are a lot of, like if you go out to an, uh, to a show, Artist Alley is like a a weird place to walk through. You have some people that are doing really well, other people that aren't. And a lot of that also comes down to styles and what have you. But you also see a, a lot of people that struggle because price points are where they are. I have had, you know, I've been to a convention as a creator and I have had people walk away for even like a, like a hot, like a, for middle grade price tiers. Cause it's just like, you have an unknown IP and there are other things that people want to spend money on with characters that they know. Yeah. And for the and record this weekend, I didn't look at anybody's, uh, yeah. Uh, prices. Yeah. But the alternate books are roughly double what it costs to print. Um, but people pay for quality and intrigue at like anything we do. Like that's, that's the whole thing is it's like, that's these shows are effectively online convention panels. Hmm. Right. Jimmy Reyes, a good book will sell at a convention at 25. Art Adam sells his for 40, Finch for 30, 35, and some sketchbooks are even 50. I mean, I mean, I got uh I got the 
finally acknowledge I've turned on Pete's Eddie. <laughs> It, no, and it all, uh, but like it, shipping and handling has its own separate price on a um, on a crowdfunder. Like that's where you have your shipping thing. That's where that that should be counted into there. Like that's that's separate money. And uh, yes, Crazy Cat, they they got you because I saw your comment up here earlier, and I'll pull it up because I I meant to bring it up um but pete cementi sells comics cheap on newsprint and doesn't sell as well as the most successful cg books so your argument just isn't solid so um so i don't have a thought on that i'm, I'm not well knowledge in I don't that know anything so. about his printing process like well like it all uh, alter practice. like it alterna like it that's that's a whole other thing i think that the big thing there is is that it is like a like i don't think that it's a quality issue that people have with it it's a matter of you know i would say that as a matter of i know that peter Samedi kind of like went away for a while and that's also a big thing that hurts a lot of creators like it's something that definitely doesn't help like, like i've had a lot of stuff happen in the past couple of years there are times where i've had to take breaks and then i come back and it's like a nuclear bomb has went off and the people that were once cool aren't all sorts of drama and all sorts of other shenanigans. And I'm up here. People keep telling me to go away. <laughs> um, people who go to comic conventions are a select subset of people who buy comics. Yeah. And genre as well. I think Art of Roy hits on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I mean, like, I'm back in like October, like marketing like a horror book. You got you can't sell books. On they they do have, it. and Kilko says Altana has high quality books, and I would agree with that. Yeah. Most of the books I've read from Altana are pretty good. Yeah. Uh, he, yes. He uh, tries hard to keep the price down using newsprint and has a lot of ads as well, different model. Yeah, I've taken up ads different... in his books. Mm-hmm. Is it you are or aren't? He's he's taken up. He's I taken have, up. I have no in the first. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I, I missed that last book. part. I said. Yeah, sorry. What? Yeah, I did. A, I did a uh, an ad and <laughs> came out on a Wednesday. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, no, it's it's good that we have this kind of discussion. Um, it, I'm kind of um, appreciative of the chat behaving. I, I'm watching it. I'm you know. There's some things uh, that, that aren't necessarily needed to be said, I've noticed. But overall, like I uh, do, don't mind at all a debate and a discussion. These are conversations I think that are important to have and talk about. Um, so I, I do appreciate, you know, VA and all of them being, being good, but also speaking their mind too without um, resorting to names. So I do appreciate that, guys. Um, for your information, Katie Pete's man was the original Eric July tractor. I know that he was attracted oh, okay. here. <laughs> I know that. I just I didn't know like his printing process kind of thing. I I didn't go deep into that lore. I know that crazy cat. I'm a blonde, but I ain't that dumb. Uh, <laughs> I just don't know what is what his process like with printing and who he goes to with and all that. I, I have no knowledge in in that department. This isn't meant um, to be an insult, BA. This is meant to establish a point of, like, and I know, like, you have competitive price points, but it's a whole thing of, I feel like a lot of people are overcharging, and it, it's a thing that has been handled that that like consumers are feeling as well. Like, there is a reason why a lot of people are on downward trends across the boards. I don't think it's calling. Uh, I don't think things saying thing, something is overpriced is insulting. It is an objective truth. If you are like a, like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like it, at the end of the day, a customer gets a book and has expectations when they pay for a cer- uh, for a certain like a, like pay like twenty five dollars, right? And if yeah. like I know if I paid twenty five dollars. And I received a floppy, I would be pretty miffed. In fact, that has happened to me before, where I paid twenty five dollars, and I got a book, and it was a floppy. I didn't like it, and especially if it's like, oh, this is going to be for like an ongoing thing. 
So what, I'm going to be paying $25 every book for how long? But it's not, it's not subjective. At the end of the day, if you have a floppy, which is anywhere between $25 and $30 a page, you're asking customers to pay you a dollar per page. And that is a lot. Mm. I, I mean, and that's, we're going to have to just agree to disagree. Yeah. But like, none, nowhere in this, like, like, do I, do I feel like I made it so that I am trying to insult anybody? I am just saying that I think that this is something that people need to look at. Cause I do think that if we lowered our price points across the board, you would have more backers coming in. And in, as a result, you would make up the money in difference. I, I understand that. I get it. Yeah. Wilberforce is still about pricing points. Yeah. Well, I will I will say this since wow, <laughs> only got so much time left. I will say this. Uh I think, you know, once you get your campaign going off on my comic, uh if you guys are ever both of you ever interested in continuing this conversation, I suggest uh going on Fox Comics channel and, and having a very good and conversational debate about this. Uh, wouldn't mind it not being Ripaverse related. It could be something else, and I, I, I would like to see this conversation continue on because, um, I don't. It's good to get both viewpoints of it, and uh, I know it could get a little spicy, but um, maybe hopefully we can see that because what I do is when when we have those debates, I I I promote campaigns and channels and uh, help get some backers and stuff because. Uh, it's always good to have a good friendly debate and also you know uh, do a little bit of promoting during that debate so um so hopefully maybe you guys can set something up like that and one day down the road we can have it but uh i do i do appreciate my chat you know and uh nobody's gone too far to where i have to ban anybody so thank you <laughs> i appreciate that uh but whoa, whoa, you know whoa, whoa, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> npc what? oasis softly egotistical artist hey dude i'm not an artist all right sorry call me egotistical NPC. Artist. i don't mind you voicing your I'm opinion not an artist. but and i've kind of noticed your comments through the chat look it's okay if you want to debate please don't kind of hit the belt with that one you don't don't be better do what eric july says and be better and with it um but i will not ban you just just uh uh, breathe the room. <laughs> I guess it's the best way to say it. Uh, let's see here. So, um, uh, <laughs> no, as long as it's not going to, you know, I don't mind giving warning, but everybody seems to be uh, doing. Oh, an doing art right. voice says, don't blame price points for low sales. It's more than that. It's timeless uh, art story, personality of Pernetius. 100% that all plays a factor. But I do yeah. think that there is also a factor of, 90%. People, especially right now, people aren't able to afford as much stuff. And I would rather have more people back at a lower price point than the inverse. Yep. And like, I, I'd like to think that I, I have a pretty good pitch. I have, a, I have like strong art on my book. I've got a very, like a, I've gotten, I've, as I said, I've done, you know, seven books in the past five years at this point. In terms of writing, and all of them have gotten pretty pretty decent response. So I, I'd like to think that I have a pretty good grasp on storytelling. So like it like it's just a matter of making sure that we are as accessible as we can be, and I think that that it does play a big role. Yeah. All right, so let no. me go ahead and uh, go ahead. If you want to make a response, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll give you. Let's see here. I will no, give I'm, you I'm five minutes. Just, I'll give you. I'll give you like ten minutes to to address checks. I know. I I don't. I don't want you leaving without feeling like you've gotten a chance to speak your mind. I, I want to give you a chance. So. Like we've 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 been talking about this at length for a while, and at the end of the day, what this comes down to is, I feel like this is a touchy topic for people because this is a like. A, this is a whole thing of it's been a massive debate, I would say, for the past three or four years. 
um, behind the scenes, and then it's come up much more recently. Um, and <laughs> I wish you all the success, and don't listen to all uh, to the worm tongues out there. I mean, I'm look, man. At the end of the day, I'm just here to make comics and have a good time doing it. I know, man. That's, and that's what, that's sure. what I've done for the most part. And broken entertainment, I agree. No one is talking about fail campaigns. It's just a discussion about pricing, which is which is fine. I mean, we need to have those conversations, and it needs to be talked about more because you know, crazy cat. This isn't this isn't a thing of twenty five dollars for a graphic novel. I would consider a graphic novel anywhere between fifty and a hundred pages, right? Yeah, like it. Like there is, there is a separation. If you're talking about a floppy style book, I feel like that is a whole other situation. Like at the end of the day, regardless of what any of us would like, people do compare price points in their head. Do I want to buy this book for this price or do I want to buy multiple books for less? Yep. And that is a thing that happens in every customer's head and every inconvenience is a reason not to back. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Art of Roy, the so-called friends in real life that would shite you for trying something are Mo online. Okay, ignore them like this NPC guy. Yeah, no, I, that's the thing. Like, I don't mind, but, but when you're getting insulting, like, you know, and, and I love Frog Tony. I do. I love you, buddy. I, I the only thing that I would disagree is, is let's not talk about backers numbers and stuff because then we're no better than the swamp. Uh, right. You know. I, and the only reason I say that is because uh, Cody Valiant campaign done by Sean Fry and his dad um, got ridiculed uh, for for only having four backers and it not being becoming a success. And uh, I I just don't want anybody to be sort of attacking you know uh, i wouldn't say attack, just commenting on backers let's let's not do that but i love frog tony i love him and he's he's a debater too i mean <laughs> he's uh he's he, he likes to get in there and debate you yeah. know and, and that's fine too um and that, that's the only thing i would say is is guys let's not um let's not be the swamp and and make fun of people for or not having successful backer numbers or whatever you want to call it. Um, so uh, I, I think it's important that uh, we support each other in that sense. So let's not, a, let's not attack it. So, um, but I love you, Frog Tony. I love you, but uh, behave, mister. <laughs> but um, like I said, it's, it's over. I've, I'm glad that there's this uh, a little bit of debate and conversation to talk about. I mean, I, I, I don't mind at all as long as it's, it's not, crazy <laughs> uh we've seen some crazy streams i ain't trying to get there yeah I'm, I'm too old and tired to get to get all loud and shit i hear you i hear you um there i give it i wouldn't bet an eye at 20 versus 25 another might never buy above five you would need to know how many backers see the price elastic versus is that in elastic and set it accordingly uh -oh. yeah. And he said, "There, I, I said it. <laughs> well, you said it. Um, and and I hear, I feel you too. I I feel I understood what. Besides that, I understood all the other stuff that Frog Tony was saying. Like I I can get his point side of the of of the argument. I can understand where he's coming from. I just I just don't just don't want to do that. Cause, like I said, the swamp does it, and I don't. And that we're not them. So, um, um. But I will say, you know, I've gotten at least two backers for you, one the other night and today. And like I said, I'm going to try to get the um, clip out on Twitter and uh, spread the word. Because like I said, I, I do, I plan to to back this campaign. I plan to support it and stand by it because I think the story is is incredible and the meaning behind it and the purpose and where it come from and knowing that uh, it's going to help families, you know, especially with that beautiful cover you know, it's it's got my full support. I, I will continue to shill the shit out of it, share the link in certain chats that I'm in, you know, especially big chats and uh, get the word out. And I do believe that, you know, once you get to fund my comic, you're definitely not going to be shadow banned. Um, a lot more people are going to have easier access to your campaign 
And um, I, I know I showed a clip, but for those that missed it, I believe you said that um, you were you will be launching. The, what is it? Gosh, we're getting September pretty so much we, almost we, over. We will be so we will be closing out the in demand on the twenty seventh. Uh, so that's I think this Friday, and then on October first, we'll be launching the Fund My Comic. So that way we do our closeouts. It'll be a 30 day campaign and we'll do our closeout on the 31st on Halloween. Yeah. And you were planning to do like a draw stream for everybody. To if, I, if I can make, if I can make it happen. Yeah. I, I like it. Like that is, that is absolutely the intent. Whoa. I think that'd be awesome. Well, if you ever get it set up, I'll definitely swing by and watch um, after, after the kids from trick or treating. So I'm sure you'll be, you'll be up late because we do the early kind of trick or treating. Um, yeah. You have to, but nowadays, that's great, right? huh? It, you have to do trick or treat like before the sun goes down. Now, my gosh, yeah, I know. Well, it used to back in my day. It used to be when it got dark. You went. That's what I'm saying. Like nowadays, like they have like a parade at like 5 p.m. Yeah, we, you know, we don't do no parades in our town. <laughs> it's yeah. it's called uh, get your kids out by five o'clock and get them in the house by seven. So <laughs> it's nobody does late night like. "Quote unquote," I guess you call late night trick or treating. It's all, it's all early, and I'm like, but night's better. I know. It. See all the decorations and shit. Like, I'm, this this generation is soft. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that'd be great. And so definitely, um, when you uh, launch your uh, campaign on um, fund my comic, I'll definitely uh, bring it up on stream and uh, promote that too. So we'll be keeping our eyes on it. And uh, like I said, I'm going to play the trailer too. I'm going to go ahead and play the trailer. I noticed we hadn't done that yet. Um, and then I'm going to let you have any last words you would like to share. And uh, and then I'll let Hojo take the floor. We'll look at his, play his trailer. And then I will excuse you two. And I will talk to the chat before I end the show. So um, that sounds all right with you guys. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Let's go. Lovely trailer, by the way, and uh, it, good tell stuff us again who did who? Yeah, beautiful, really good. Who did your trailer, by the way? Let's give credit to to them it, for it. It was it was good stuff. He did a great job. Yeah, he did my trailer too. Wow, there you go. Look at that good stuff. I'm not showing off two of your trailers today, honey. <laughs> he, did, he did my first trailer too. Shout out to Mister Good Stuff. There, shout out to you, sir. Uh, but go ahead, Michael. If there's anything you would like to share with the chat. Um, any final no, words just, or and where we can thank, find you and all that stuff. Thanks so much for having me on. Uh, it's always yeah. a pleasure to come and talk about the books. I, uh, you know, we definitely had uh, got derailed and started talking price points and what <laughs> have you. And that's always like a heated discussion. That's so okay, that's, honey. that's on me. <laughs> but uh, it's okay. if you if you are still interested, please check out the Embrace 2. Uh, you know, this is. Uh, no, like I uh, and nine realm sources. I agree. Do I agree that the price point isn't the main driving factor? No, absolutely not. It's a bonus. The price point is a thing of 
that we are, especially right now, we are at a position where at making things more affordable gets us access to more backers. And this was all I was trying to say all stream was that I think that <clears throat> like a, like point the point, the point is, is that, you know, we like a, like price points do affect sales, especially for smaller people. And right at, at our level, backers backer count is is like the most important thing because it's about expanding our base and that is the whole point yep. that being said the embrace 2 is closing out on indiegogo on the 27th i hope that the story and the art and everything like that is something that speaks to people i'd like to think that the first book did we had over 600 signups on the pre-launch mailing list. Uh, it's been a, uh, it, and we funded in the first like 30 minutes that we were live. So like grateful for all the support that we've had so far. And hopefully we will see more support in the future. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, no problem, honey. And don't be shy. Come on back. Okay. Don't, don't. Don't you know? Don't don't let this this one uh, keep you from coming. Please come oh, back. No, I would love for you to come back, and especially am, when you I get off on my comic. Of, I am never afraid of a debate. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Um, but I'm I appreciate back. it, hon. And like I said, we'll see you soon. And uh, thank you for taking time out of your day. And God bless you, hon. Have a good one. One hundred percent. Well, you know, I'm really glad that. Um, you came on here today, Hojo, and uh, yeah. been a good moderator. <laughs> because I usually just kind of, you know, like Matthew Fowler said, just just let it happen. I, I just <laughs> when I saw, well, it, I was like, I okay, I'll, I'm just gonna let it happen. I, you know, because I, I, I don't have a side to pick. Um, yeah, but every creator sees the game differently, you know. Mm -hmm. So like we can have spirited debates, and but like I think we can all agree at the end of the day that it is like getting more readers and like get in backers and like the more if like you get more backers you can drop your prices or keep them or i mean at that point you can raise them back up because people are going to pay a premium to get a hojo's book you know and not think of the meth hotel you know what i'm saying <laughs> so um but yeah it's i think we could all just kind of step back a little bit and we can agree to disagree, but I'd agree at the end of the day, like I said, it is about, it should be about the comics, right? Exactly. No, I agree. Yeah. No, and there's nothing wrong with, with debate. I mean, I think, I mean, that's what I was saying. I, that's why I, I told what Ross comics was saying was, you know, how this would be great because he's a really good moderator. And I, I told him, I said, you know, I think this would be, like a healthy way for for people in in the community that you know uh, have thoughts and feelings about certain things of how how it's the indie communities run or like I said pricing today and all that uh, that could be good productive debates but at the same time we can really promote each person's campaign uh, get the mm -hmm. word out there about their channels and you know each time it's done it it's helped be a uh, get more backers and and so I like to see others step in the ring and. And do it as well. And um, even even if it was a Ripaverse fan that has a campaign, I would be shooting out his campaign as well. Because at the end of the day, it's about backing one another. And if they're willing to come on and have a, a very civilized, knowledgeable, intelligent kind of debate without it going off the fucking rails, uh, then, you know, it's it's good that we promote and stuff. So um, I think that's where a lot of debates need to come off Twitter and you know, let's have it here where it's civilized. It's you know, let's be adults. Let's let's share our thoughts without tearing each other down. And I think that's, in my opinion, that's my perspective. Okay, I know it sounds like hippie shit, nippity hippity jibbity hippity whatever shit, but uh, that's just how I, mean, I feel. So, like to sound like Dill over. if if Dill already like it sounds female. <laughs> this is what it sounds like. But yeah, yeah, I yeah, I get it. I get it. It should be like. Some kind of like nerd slap fight club, to where, you can, <laughs> where you can put the Hulk hands on and just like, just keep it, you know, keep it there. And then, I mean, at, at the end of the day, and you can even have the chat like vote on who wins. 
exactly. It can it can work out good, and I think it's a healthier way of doing it instead of you know what we usually see on Twitter. You know, I, oh, it's, it's a it's a better <laughs> it's a better way to get it out of your get it off your chest. But you know, you know, it's just in a better setting in a sense, a more healthier way. Uh, yes, Apex Hibbity Jibbity. Oh right. Woo! That was that was a good show. That was really good. Guys, go back both of these, please. They're they're good campaigns. Uh, Mr. Perfect Hair, uh, Katie, this was a great conversation to listen to. No hibbity jibbity. Yeah, I look. I don't mind debates. They're they're great. I think that it makes for an interesting show. Um, the chat, you know, expresses how they feel, and then the panel can express how they feel. As long as it doesn't get to, you know, swamp levels, then we're good. I, I think when it gets to that point, you, you really don't have a productive conversation and a productive debate. So uh, that's why I encourage everyone to uh, uh, go over to, like, Frost Comics channel, uh, subscribe and all, and uh, check out the debates, he, the two past two debates. Oh, sorry, I hit the mic. Uh, and yet, no, I did... I did see that, and I appreciate everybody keeping it civil. I I do. Uh, I was getting a little nervous there. I was sweating, like, oh, oh shit, here we go. And uh, no, thank you guys for for being civil. I do appreciate that. Like I said, I don't like I I don't mind um, people sharing their thoughts in the chat as long as it doesn't get to be you know to, to retarded levels. Um, yeah, no swamp levels here, and people know what I'm talking about when I say that. Um, it helps. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it it does. It does. Um, but I I I I'm up for debates. I I like having that debate. I I think it made the show interesting, and and I I can understand both sides of the conversation. You know, that's I guess I guess I'm a fence sitter on that one because I can get where both both you know B A in the chat and Michael and. I, I get what they were trying to say. So, um, but I do hope Michael does come back again, uh, especially when he uh, makes a transition to uh, fund my comic. Uh, so, say, uh, Mr. Reborn, Katie did might just be the most mature person at Comscape with her kibbity jibbity. Well, I like to think so. You know, I know people's like, oh, what a dumb blonde. She has no idea. Like, that's not how it works. You know, oh, that's just, that's just fantasy. And it's like, well, I can, I'd rather be a positive Polly than a negative fucking Nancy. Okay. Time escape blood sports. <laughs> Comparing to manga is not legitimate comparison. Uh, I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, yeah, love this talk as I'm currently asking myself these questions for my comics. See, that's why I think it's good that we have those kind of debates because there's people that are watching or in, that's in the chat that's curious about that. You know, they, they want to hear other people's opinions about it. So I'm glad that that really helped you. That's good. That's that's the whole point of, of having those kind of talks. So. Good. Well, I know Hojo will. I know Hojo will. But I, I'm I'm glad to have Michael come back. I do because I, I cause I'm telling you guys as a parent, I can't help but not support Michael. I I, I really um the, the program, the Virginia Assistance Program. I mean, just everything. And you know, he's a neighbor. We're both in Virginia on opposite sides of the state, obviously. But he's my neighbor, and uh, just like Hojo. So I just want to, you know, you know, support those. And, in your local area. Um Comic Comicscape Bloodsport Arena channel. That's new. Uh the only the only place that it can get to that, which Apex you know is DG's uh neutral ground stream. Uh that's that's if when I think Blood Blood Sports Arena, I think of, of that stream, um, that show. Uh and it is kind of interesting to sit and just laugh about it but uh dg's the only one that that has that i don't think i could ever do anything like that so it's better better him than me i would say at the iq levels of katie ditch channel in the chat are superior to the swamp thank you i would hope so i know my chat is smart i love my chat i love you guys because you guys support people that i have on my show 
you you ask really good questions uh, to to people I have on here. Um, so we like Liam here. So someone in chat made a good point earlier. There's not one solution. There are only trade offs. Yeah. And I just like I said too, I I love Frog Tony. I I'm glad he came by and hung out in the chat. Frog Tony's a spicy Ticano. So love love Tony. Which by the way, you guys should check out his stream last night. Did a little bit of detracting if you're interested in that. Uh well we got a surprise guest. Uh Nine Whelms Publishing. Hello. Oh, the uh, it's, this is just me again. I was just in the back room. Oh, I, okay. Uh, I was like, who how did, did you get uh, no, that's that's my bad. You you can go in ahead and do your closeout. I was just coming oh, on to say thank you and everything. Again, my internet just timed out. I just wanted to say thank you once more. Oh, no problem, Michael. Anytime. I'm hey man, I like I said, I hope you come back. I love to see how your campaign looks on fun my comic and especially as we get close to the Halloween season. So I no, Michael, I appreciate you, honey. I really do. And I, yeah, like no, I said, and, taking and, time out of your morning to or uh, afternoon really to to come on here. So and like I said, I will um I'll continue to share the link to you. So uh, especially on Saturday nights. So if you ever just want to come in and promote a little bit and leave, you can. One hundred percent. And I, and hey, I just want to say thank you to the chat one last time. Uh, heated debate, but we kept it civil, and that's what's important. And discussions are. Like these, I think, are very important in this space. And uh, just want to say thanks to everybody for uh, civility and hearing out my points. And I hope I did a decent enough job hearing out yours. But, all right, I'm going to pop off. But I, I did okay. want to just say that because I didn't want to feel like, I didn't want people to feel like I just <laughs> cut out. Like, it, no, the internet over you're... here is not great right now. No, you're good. And and Zen Comics says right on. And Crazy Cat says you're welcome. Don't you worry about it, darling. You did good. Right. I appreciate you. And I'll catch you soon, okay? Have a good one. Bye. All right. Bye. Clip, clip, and snip, snip. <laughs>